series to see who is going to be moving on into the winner's finals. We have for Kohei, it is a Porygon 2 and a Regieleki, and OneSuck is kicking things off with a Regieleki and Incineroar. Well, the Porygon 2, definitely not uh, too threatened here. If it wants to Dynamax and try and cause problems again, could try and Max Strike. Uh, there's definitely, you know, those two options of speed control from Kohei's side of the field to be able to uh, slow things down with Electrowebs, Max Strikes over and over again. Of course, you have to be respectful of the potential uh, fake out on this turn and, and causing problems that way. Um, but I think both trainers playing it kind of safe. The Regieleki's uh, not particularly threatened just on paper at Team Preview, and that's why I think both trainers opting to bring it in the lead. No sight of a ground on, no sight of something like like the uh, Landorus either, which only one other person in the tournament has. So probably a good safe pick for both these trainers. If Porygon 2 will be Dynamaxing though, it's not right now. No, we will see that Tapu Lele though on Kohei's team hitting the field and setting the psychic terrain. So maybe in preparation for something like a Sableye from One Suck coming back out uh, to show its head in this match but we will have to see whether that is the case as it's just going to be a Volt Switch for now. And maybe now we'll find out. Maybe now we'll find out whether or not that Sableye is waiting in the back, nope. but it's not. <laughs> a resounding no on that one. I checked as soon as the menu <laughs> popped up and I was like, you know what, respect to the Tapu Lele, uh, not coming in there at all. And that's a really smart choice from one second team preview. Uh, the Tapu Lele, of course, making sure there's no fake outs going through. Um, but it doesn't look like that's what the Incineroar on one second side went for anyway. Um, but it is going to, for its troubles of not faking out, uh, it's going to get caught by an electro web. Yeah, but I think that's something that you really do have to respect if you are one suck is the fact that Psychic Terrain could come onto the field at basically any moment in time. And I like that one suck in this situation decided, hey, I don't have to fake out, I just have to get damage. And so we'll be able to knock out that Regieleki. Um, and now we get to see the Zacian for Kohei hit the field. Yeah, well, Kohei's, all four of his team has been revealed right away, and now, you know, with the, the presence of Zacian, it limits your Dynamax options, you know, you're down to two um, between the two of them, and, and once I've just said, you know what, I don't, I don't want to deal with this Regieleki, I'm, I'm over this. Just double-targeted it down, really nicely done, got his own Regieleki out nice and safe with the Volt Switch, and is, is in a really good position to bring that back in later and, and try and cause some problems. So uh, very respectful of the potential Tapu Lele switch in. Uh, really thoughtful play, something that I think a lot of people uh, are getting the hang of, even though Tapu Lele has been around for years. Um, but no way to set the sun for that Charizard. Uh, just something to note for the late game, the Charizard, of course, that one suck has in the back. Um, not going to be coming to uh, the field too uh, soon as the Regieleki takes place. Um, but, you know, I think a, a good opening turn from one suck and you just need to keep that momentum going. Yeah, you're gonna see the Sacred Sword here come out from Kohei Zashian, and that will reveal that One Suck's Regieleki does have that Focus Sash that it will be able to hold on with. So, I, you know, this makes things a little bit interesting because obviously at this point, Regieleki could be doing a little bit of speed control, could help pivot. Uh, but what you're really trying to do right now is remove that threat of Zashian from Kohei's side. Yeah, you need. I think you need the Zashian to be. I mean, the Zashian can be handled by the Charizard. I, I think you know, One Suck just needs to keep the momentum up. Does of course have the Pokemon advantage, but I think you know, just board position, both trainers kind of equally matched right now. Uh, switching in your Regieleki and coming down to your Focus Sash isn't the best, but it's better than losing the Regieleki like Kohei did in turn one. So these teams very well matched, and uh, and the game is still really anyone's to take. Yeah, I think if you're one like you're just a little bit worried about whether or not this Zacian is going to set up something like a substitute. We've seen that very standard on most of the Zacian sets in the Global Exhibition. So I think you do have to still play it a little bit safe that that Zacian isn't just going to sit behind a substitute when your Charizard's on the field. But Behemoth Blade does come through. It will knock out this Tapu Lele. And that is another big knockout for one suck. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, slowed down a little bit in turn two, but another knockout, putting him in a four to two Pokemon advantage. This does now mean, and uh, does confirm something rather important, uh, the Porygon 2 should be Dynamaxing again. Uh, that's just, <laughs> it has to be that way. This is the only way that Kohei can get a Dynamax in, but one looks not even used his yet. I mean, I'm assuming he's saving it for the Charizard in the back, uh, but no Dynamax out of the Porygon 2 this turn. Uh, maybe looking at the speed of things on the board, knowing that speed drops are coming in and trying to weave in something a little bit before the Dynamax. We'll see if it gets the opportunity to do that though. 
the big question here, though, is how much damage is it going to take? It's not going to take as much this turn. The Zacian on Kohei's side of the field taking a lot of damage from the Behemoth Blade in return, and a nice little safe Sacred Sword from Kohei Zacian. Uh, the most unnecessary critical hit I've ever seen in my life landing onto that Regieleki. So the Pokemon count does come a little bit closer here. Uh, back now at 3-2, to two, but the Porygon gets exactly what it needs. It's been caught by slows from the Electroweb. So is the Zacian, so the Zacian on Kohei's side is slower. And of course, the Trick Room now means it's gonna be in a good position. That means that the Porygon 2 definitely gonna be moving first in these turns. So when it decides to Dynamax, it's gonna be feeling pretty good about itself um, and how it wants to play through this game. But, um, you know, being able to, to get through the next few turns uh, is really what Kohei needs to do. And he needs to capitalize on this Trick Room. Yeah, this trick room is going to be super, super important, especially recognizing that, you know, one sec has some pretty fast Pokemon, but we'll have to see how this goes. We are going to see a Dynamax here, and let's see how much this is going to be able to get done. Porygon 2! It's good to see you again, friend. I know Adam is pretty excited about this. I think, no, I think it, it counts as famous now. I think once you've done it three times, <laughs> this is now, like, three games consecutively, it's now the Kohei. That's, like, it's now I'm <laughs> coining that one uh, on his behalf. But anyway, we'll see what it can do in these turns. It's starting off with the Max Strike. A uh, bit of a classic for it there. And the Max Strike is uh, going to be doing good old chunk of damage. Yeah, it's going to do a lot of damage, but also lower the speed. Uh, at least Incineroar for one suck is going to be able to eat up its Citrus Berry to regain some health, but oh boy. Uh, you're definitely, if you're one suck trying to get, you know, continue with the momentum that you had generated at the beginning of this first game. Yeah, I mean, the, the Trick Room is going to be causing some problems. There goes the terrain. Uh, not really relevant in this one. Uh, but I think the knockout was needed there on the Incinera. I think One Suck's actually still in a really good position here. The Zashin not taking any damage on One Suck's side, you know, being sat there at full health. Realistically, you know, what does that Porygon 2 have to offer when it comes to beating it? Because it's making it uh, life awkward for itself here. Um, you know, landing these max strikes, yes, it's going to be great for the damage. It's going to be great for knocking out this Incineroar. But you're making the opposing Zashin slower than your own. So yeah. while you're in the Trick Room, it's going to be able to capitalize off that. Um, you know, we are going to see exactly how these Zashins match up right now. And... Uh, you know, Behemoth Blade going onto Kohei Zashian because he gave it the speed drops that it needed in the Trick Room. So, uh, you know, now it's really Porygon 2 against the world. And, and I don't think, something we've talked about already today, when you're a Dynamax, you're in your single target attacks and you can't 2v1 no matter what speed advantage you have. Yeah, I know that Max Strike is going to be one of Porygon 2's most powerful Dynamax moves, but... I don't think that was it. I mean, One Suck here is going to go ahead and play it a little safe here, just making sure that the Charizard stays protected. It is going to take the Max Strike, but it's still dropping the Zacian and the Charizard speed, Adam. I mean, it, yeah, maybe there's a, world, a crazy world where you can drop their speeds enough, end the Trick Room, and, and then be the fastest thing. But I just don't see it being able to take all of this damage that's coming through right now. Another Behemoth Blade right into that Porygon 2. You know, you've bought it nice and low. And Dynamax Porygon 2 was not the one this game for Kohei. It may be his signature play in this tournament so far, but it wasn't able to get him the win. Well, there's always game number two because we are playing a best of three series and we are in the winner side of the bracket. So there's still lots of chances, I feel like, here for uh, our players to come back into this one. But, you know, I think that was really, really good play coming out from One Suck, especially when you consider just how well he was able to play around the, the Tapu Lele, right? Didn't even bring Sableye, didn't even give uh, give up like a, a fake out or anything like that. Just played around the psychic terrain really, really beautifully. And I think that put him in a really good position. It, it's easy to get excited about Kohei's team and the Porygon too. Bear in mind that that game was actually won without One Suck using the Dynamax. That's how commanding that victory was. And even though there was a couple of good turns, a couple of big potential comeback turns for Kohei, you need to be able to, you know, at least push your opponent 
to be close enough that they have to use their Dynamax there, and, and that is something that I think would be concerning for Kohei going into game two. Maybe needs to bring out the Dynamax earlier, throw on a little bit more pressure, um, because, you know, turn one, lost a Pokemon, and was always behind the pace a little bit when it came down to it. So really well done from one suck. Um, you know, just playing the game. That Zashin sat on the field, took no damage. And putting it in the position to knock out the opposing Zashin after the max strikes was a choice. Um, and I think that's something to consider going into game number two. Well, let's go ahead and get into game number two. See how this series goes. One suck does have a one game lead over Kohei but this is still a best of three, so let's see what happens as Kohei switches things up a little bit, brings out the Regieleki and Incineroar, and I'm seeing double again, Adam. This this is the lead that a lot of people like. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. Don't get your eyes checked. It's just that popular. It really <laughs> is powerful. It really does work well together. You know, you can buy a little bit of time with a potential fake out, you know, and, and land maybe an Electro Web to follow it up. So it's just a good lead all around. And when both of you have access to use your Regieleki kind of freely, why not, right? You know, there's no ground types to be worrying about. And maybe you can catch the Charizard or you can catch something uh, that doesn't want to be there against uh, you know, the, the the Regieleki. So if you don't get it, you just have the option to switch it out with a Volt Switch as well and, and save it for a little bit later. So uh, I think it's a surprisingly safe lead, even though one of the Pokemon is, is exceptionally offensive. I think it all depends on what each player decides to do with this first turn, because remember when we were looking at the Charizard Venusaur mirror match that happened in that turn zero, turn one? It all mattered on how you decided to work around mm -hmm. what you were given. And so it looks like for Kohei, it's going to be using a protect on that Regieleki and just a double protect all around, really respecting a potential fake out coming out from One Suck and also just making sure that One Suck also can't actually use something like a, a pivot, like a Volt Switch, to be able to kind of change things around. Uh, Kohei being very respectful of potentially, you know, just doesn't even want to opt in to losing out, getting faked out first, or, you know, and playing any of those silly games. And when you're down uh, a game in the set, I think that's kind of the, the smart heads up play you have to make to look at the opposing board and, and say, you know what, if you get an early lead here, I'm dropping down to the loser's bracket. And if you want to avoid that fate, just double protect. It's a super obvious answer. You do have to have a response to follow it up in turn two because you don't have protects anymore. But I'm sure that's something that Kohei thought about before even clicking protect twice in that previous turn. Well, it looks like he has. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and see a Dynamax coming out here. And that just might be the answer that Kohei was looking for when it comes down to how to deal with these mirrored leads. Regieleki as a Dynamaxer can put on so much pressure with all of those max lightnings and nice uh, little bit of damage coming in from one sucks Regieleki, but it's time for the big damage. Max Regieleki into opposing Regieleki. Wow, that is going to be more than enough to bring one sucks Regieleki down to its focus sash. But we've and seen set this the in... electric terrain. Oh yeah, that's that's helpful for both. That is I helpful mean, the, for both. The big thing here is if... Oh, the parting shot, that's going to be important. The big thing here, though, is, you know, if Kohei sticks around and uh, something happens to One Sucks at the end of this turn, um, you know, that's going to be the only one able to take advantage of it. So uh, kind of nice heads-up play there. And I get to confirm it's exactly the same four for One Suck in this game, uh, including the potential to uh, bring in that Charizard late game. That Charizard, though, has to be respectful right now. Now is not the time because there's a Reggie Lucky on the field. Yeah, uh, I mean, both of these Regieleki can take advantage of the electric terrain if they are given the opportunity, but they will not be. Incineroar is going to go ahead and use that Flare Blitz to finish off that last bit of HP that one sucks Regieleki was hanging on to. And so now it's time to bring the Incineroar back in, I feel like. Yep, but get another one of those turns where you, you know, try and threaten with the fake out or even something like the parting shot. I mean, those are going to start adding up on the Regieleki. It's fast and it can be uh, slowed down. Um, you know, the electric terrain's up um, and this could be a turn to, to 
I think Kohei's got to go for it on this turn. I think another uh, slower paced turn could be a problem. But for one sec, it's all about dealing with that Regieleki right now. That Regieleki is the only thing that really stops that Charizard from running away with the game potentially later. Um, so a lot of focus is going to be heading towards that. The parting shots are going to help. You know, landing Behemoth Blades on it. Or, you know, Sacred Swords is going to be the way to go as well. Um, you know, and the Incineroar is, is kind of limited on Kohei's side. You know, it's used its fake out. It's, it's done its Flare Blitz knockout trick. Uh, just to get that extra one health damage down. Um, but overall, you know, the Incineroar forced out. This is this is one sucks turn to try and capitalize on it. Zosh Green hitting the field for Kohei. Will be able to get that plus one attack boost from its Intrepid Sword ability. And a Max Guard coming out from Kohei's Regieleki. Not going for damage here, but that Zashian will go ahead and take that fake out from the Incineroar. And so uh, it, this is a, a pretty mute turn in terms of damage for both parties. Yeah, no damage, but the poor position a lot better for Kohei after that turn. Uh, getting rid of the Incineroar that wasn't doing as much, having the Incineroar available for later as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe even this turn to switch it in, you know, drop down and intimidate onto the Zashian over on one sock side of the field, being able to bring down the attack after that Intrepid Sword boost. Definitely a little more important if you ask me. So, uh, you know, the, the getting rid of the Intrepid Sword boost is surprisingly important when you've got access to it as well. I mean, there's no reason not to. Um, again, Getting that out, kind of important for Kohei as well. So the Regieleki though only has one more turn of its Dynamax, and I think this is the turn it's really going to have to capitalize on the fact it's already got Electric Terrain. It just needs to land a really nice big hit. Uh, it's not going to be landing it though on one sucks uh, Zashian. Well, here comes the Max Lightning. It oh, is Max Strike! Oh wow! Yeah, it's going to be the Max Strike. It's going to okay. be taking control of the. Sp Speeds. Um, the the max strike there, just making sure in the Zashian mirror, the Kohei Zashian is going to be able to win it every time, pretty much. Um, you know, unless some kind of speed control comes in from one suck side in response. Yeah, I was, you know, every time you see a Regieleki, you're basically expecting that it's always going to just be electric type attacks. But this specific Regieleki showing that it has max strike most likely has access to Hyper Beam. So I love that tech onto this Regieleki, knowing that there are going to be plenty of mirror matches if Kohei is reading the meta correctly. And you're absolutely right, Adam. Kohei Zashian is going to be much faster now to be able to deal with all of One Sucks Pokemon. I'll be honest, I've learned the hard way about the uh the Regieleki Hyper Beam tech. I've learned my lesson <laughs> on that one. And whenever I see the animation not quite look like a Max Lightning, I'm like, there it is, Max Strike. Uh, that's that's the one. Um, so I've learned my lesson that one. And uh, to see that used in a tournament of this caliber rather than the games I play, uh, really, really impressive. And being able to win the Zashian Mirror is something that I think a lot of trainers have to think about when they come in to these types of tournaments. The Charizard was forced in by the parting shot from Incineroar. And even though the parting shots have been landing pretty consistently, uh, there's still an electric terrain up and it's still a Regieleki, to be quite honest with you. So uh, that Zashian on one such side forced out so it can at least stand a chance in the mirror with the opposing Zashian. Uh, one suck, of course, still holding on to the Dynamax or Gigantamax, as it would be in the case of the Charizard, being able to throw that down. Really, really important to, to maybe try and see out the game. And really importantly, take an attack from this Regieleki that's now back in its regular old form, using Thunderbolts uh, and things a little more manageable than the Max Lightnings. Yeah, this Gigantamax for the Charizard hopefully is going to be enough to save it. But I feel like he's going for it. That's a, a pretty nice amount of damage. It doesn't uh, even go after the Charizard. It goes after the uh, slot that was Zashin. It becomes the Incineroar. Um, the Charizard's left to, to kind of do its thing right now. And we'll see exactly what that thing is after it takes this Behemoth Blade. Uh, Behemoth Blade not even bringing it down, not even getting a third down. And ooh, this GMAX Wildfire is about to make this game uh, quite interesting. Yeah, that's going to be just a knockout right onto the Regieleki. So really good positioning from One Sock here in order to just kind of eat up that damage and then be able to dish it right back. Uh, not going to lie to you, I can't read Korean, despite being Korean myself. So, well, <laughs> I'm happy a lot of damage. Trouble. 
a lot of damage coming down in that turn. Importantly, the Charizard set up the G-Max Wildfire. That's going to make this Zacian's uh, decision-making a little bit harder. I do think that these effects, such as the Vine Last, such as the Wildfire, even the Volcalith, um, which I know is something we, we don't like to talk about too much, um, because some people get a little bit up in arms about it. You know, really being able to limit the options that you have when it comes down to, uh, you know, can I substitute on this Ashian? Well, no, not really, because you're just going to take residual damage behind it, and you're, yeah. you know, dropping your health a little bit lower to try and get through it all. So, uh, really nicely done. That Charizard getting in pretty much free of charge. Uh, really nice for Kohei, and maybe overthinking the turn. Uh, the final Pokemon revealed, though, the type of Lele. Uh, yes, it is going to have access to its terrain and its seed as well, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. I think there's a, a lot being asked of this Tapu Lele right now. Yeah, Tapu Lele is not known to be one of the most damaging of Pokemon. And, you know, yeah, that Psychic Seed is going to help a little bit to be able to increase its special defense here. But also interesting. Interesting yeah. that the Incineroar right there showed off Brick Break. Well, the Brick Break's a tech that probably isn't super important in this matchup, but I think in other matchups where you're facing down against those light screens and the Reflex, yes, that is a lot more important, but still a decent little chunk of damage. And of course, you don't take any recoil damage from throwing out something like the Flare Blitz. So just a little bit of chip going down, but a little bit of chip is uh, kind of the order of the day, really, because that's what goes down onto this Tapu Lele as well. And the Charizard's got one more turn of the Dynamax available. Be curious to see if there's any options to to maybe try and, and set up for a late game position. I mean, I know the Incineroar is probably feeling pretty comfortable right now, but I would really like to see if we could get something like, you know, the Max Airstream set up with the switch into the Zacian, so you can just win that mirror really easily late on. Of course, you have to be respectful of it. You don't want to throw in the Zacian too early. Um, but speaking of throwing in the Zacian, it's exactly what Kohei is going to do this turn. Yeah, and Sidoro switching out for the Zacian that has just been waiting in the wings there. And we're also going to see another switch, One Suck deciding to bring out their own Zacian as well. So both of these Pokemon going to get that plus one attack boost from that Intrepid Sword ability. And let's see how much damage this G-Max Wildfire is going to do. That is going to be plenty. That Psychic Seed will not be enough to keep that Tapu Lele on the field. And more importantly now, a Zacian is still going to be taking that residual Wildfire damage. While I really would have liked to see the Max Airstream there to make sure that the mirror is consistently won, uh, one sucks still just making sure that you get the knockouts on the Tapu Lele and force the last two Pokemon here from, of course, uh, Kohei's side. Being down to your last two is really, really tricky at times, especially when a Pokemon such as Incineroar is one of them, which loves to switch in and out. We could see, and one suck has the liberty to do this, switch in Incineroar. We make mm -hmm. sure you lower the, the stats of the opposing Zacian, then get your own Zashin back in a little bit later, maybe with a parting shot. So you've got a double lowered attack stat on the Zashin, and yours comes in nice and healthy, uh, not taking any residual damage between turns from a G-Max Wildfire, and a full attack stat as well. So a really well maneuvered board from one suck. Um, you know, knowing about that potential play, taking advantage of the extra Pokemon in his count, the Airstream doesn't really matter at this point. Would have just made the Charizard's life a little bit easier. But the Charizard's not the focal point. The Charizard's not the win condition anymore. Just throwing out the protect. Yeah, it is all about preserving the Zashian for later, as we are going to see the Behemoth Blade from Kohei go ahead and attack right into the Incineroar. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be a really good position, I feel like, for one sec to be in, because you can... The Incineroar is still healthy, it's still alive, it can still go for that pivot that you were talking about, Adam, to just get that Zashian back in without the threat of it being intimidated. No, I mean, yeah, it's the, the Zashian being preserved and being healthier, I think, is really, really key. Having the speed control would have been nice, but that is not an option right now. And the Incineroar, honestly, on, on Kohei's side is just not really doing very much. Um, the Zashian, ooh, playing it safe, maybe trying to dodge a parting shot. I think if one stock makes the right move here, could really be pushing the game a little bit uh, out of Kohei's reach. Um, but this Zashian was the target uh, from both of One Suck's Pokemon and is able to deal with that with the Protect. Well, the good news is that Charizard's still around for, for One Suck, so it can continue to do what it was going to do, which is just try to target down the Zashian and take it off the field. 
but Zacian goes for the Sacred Sword, and that will be enough to knock out one Sucks Incineroar, which still is a pretty good position to be in, I feel like, because you can just go ahead and get your Zacian in for free. However, Charizard, after using that Blast Burn to knock out Kohei's Zacian, is going to have to take a turn to recharge. I don't really it think might not that even he's going to... It's going to need the Charizard to wrap up this game. We were talking about this mirror between the Zacian and Wansuck just found this position where, you know what, he, he got rid of the Zacian before his even needed to show up again. So really well-managed endgame from Wansuck. And, and yes, early turns. Again, Kohei, you know, seemed to be in a solid position. Uh, but the team selection was absolutely beautiful from Wansuck every single time, you know, being able to, to navigate around some of those early turns. And Incineroar in a 2v1 like this, uh, no. Uh, even with the Charizard recharging, I just don't see it happening. Uh, there is an interesting reveal there on the berry. Uh, for those of you that haven't been following along, you know, these berries are important. Berry. And while most people, yeah, most people go for the recovery berry, the chopper berry.